Hi guys, I am Priyank, and uh, we'll be spending some time today uh, talking about few important things in sales, and you know, uh, basically drawing learnings from what I have learned. This is my last twelve years of experience. This topic, uh, sell me this pen. It is probably a question asked in every second uh, sales interview, and the more you go towards uh, the entry level role hiring, it is almost a certainty. It may not be a pen; it might be a product that you might have sold in your previous organization. It might be a product that you might be selling in this upcoming role. But there is a very deep thought uh, behind asking this question. and we'll come to that when we come to the answer or or you know the thought process behind this question but before we go there um as himadri was saying that there is already a lot of content available around uh sell me this pen it is it is not a new topic it is something which has been going on there are so many memes around it uh, and there are so many uh, tutorials videos etc etc so why why probably would should you be listening to me or why me so i i just thought i'll just share a snapshot of uh what i have been doing in the last 12 years or in my corporate journey so this is a year by year summary of what i have been doing so what i want to highlight to you here is this number 4815 these are these are this is the number of people and obviously it's not very accurate it's an approximation that i have uh, and these are all sales roles there are a lot of non sales roles also for which i have been part of the hiring panels but these are all sales roles that i have been responsible for hiring for these uh, 5000 odd hirings done i am, might have done more than 7000 interviews which broadly comes to Almost two two point five interviews every single day uh, for twelve years. So there were days where I would be doing fifty plus interviews also. And when you do so many interviews, uh, you not only develop a knack uh, for figuring out uh, what the right thing to look for is, is but you also are able to do it fast, right? So that's one thing, and you can see I have. Done hiring across levels, be it FOS, sales executive, RSOs, relationship managers, BDs, and then maybe team leaders, key account executives, cluster managers, zonal heads, and then region heads, national heads, directors everywhere. Yeah. So and and across salary ranges also is something that uh, you know you can have a look. So so that's me and yeah, still on this journey. It's not stopped so far. moving on i just wanted to understand that up, so obviously i will talk about uh, sell me this pen basis my experience basis what you guys have been learning at juno and basis you know overall uh, you know your your interest so far uh, uh, once we are done with uh, sell me this pen what else would you like me to talk about if you can just select one of the options given here and submit it we'll we'll just leave you with 30 seconds for this sure so you may want to hear the answers to some other interview questions you can tell me what which is the question which kind of bothers you or you know which is uh, which is uh, kind of a nightmare for you or a bothersome for you so we can talk about that or if you are say uh, a manager a team manager or a founder you may want to ask me what are the questions to ask in sales interviews and what are the expected right answers uh, you can select that or if you just want to talk about how to build a career in sales uh, you know you can select that option and submit okay uh, once you have submitted your answer you can maybe ping on the chat so that we know you have submitted i think uh, priyank we can stop the poll because uh, 35 people have responded and i don't see okay. any more fluctuations 
perfect perfect if you can just share the response with me uh, yeah. okay so can you see the responses okay, okay great so 70% people want to talk about uh, building a career in sales 40% about uh, uh, questions to ask in sales interview and the right answers and 33% uh, some other interview question. Perfect. So I will try and cover all the three, uh, but in the corresponding ratio that you have demanded. So I'll focus more on building a career in sales. Thank you. Thank you, Madhuri, for the poll and thank you everyone for Thanks, sharing. Yeah. Okay, so let's move ahead. So when this question is asked, uh, sell me this pen, the interviewer is trying to understand that are you a likable person or will you be someone when you go with that company's product into the market, will you be liked by the customers, right? So it's not just about being able to tell the features and the specifications of the product. It's also about the way of telling also, the answer typically has to start with something called as a persona system. So the answer here will be just a four-step process. You just have to follow these four steps. And th these four steps will not only enable you to sell a pen, it will enable you to sell anything. Anything, any, any product, any service, any type of customer, large, SME, whatever. You should be able to sell with these four basic steps. What happens is usually these steps are omitted. You jump to the pitching directly and that's where the gap is, right? So let's look at the first step. Uh, let me just first showcase you all the four steps. The four steps are persona assessment, probing, pitching, and closing, right? So we will just spend a minute on each of the steps. I'll explain you what the step is, give you a sample answer, and then we can take up more questions about that, right? So first of all, persona assessment. Now in an interview scenario, typically you'll be uh, sitting in front of somebody who's kind of dressed in formals, is probably a mid-senior level, uh, manager level employee of the organization in which you are applying, and he'll be giving you a pen to sell him to, right? So before you start talking about this pen, uh, or what happens? What are the usual answers? People start talking about this pen it costs fifty rupees, but its value is much higher. Or they give, they try to dramatize the situation. They do, you know, this pen, whatever you write, it comes true. Or you know, the pen is mightier than the sword. You need to have a pen, or you need to, um, you know, sign some very important documents. So a very classy pen will reflect on your personality. Uh, so all that probably is something that is not the best answer or probably not even the right answer, right? So first of all, when you start answering the question, take a second and focus on the person in front of you. Say, for example, in this scenario, the person is a professional kind of, somebody like me, right? He's a professional person. So you understand the thing and then you identify the need, right? And then you try and generate a demand. For example, in this case, you can say, hello, sir. Uh, I can see uh, that you are a professional person and you would be needing some kind of tool in your meetings and discussions, etc. and so on, right? So this is basically assessment of the persona and trying to identify the need, right? So, so that is the first step. In case you are selling something else, some other product, the person in front of you will have a different need. Uh, a homemaker would have a different need for a product. A professional would have a different need. A business uh, person would have a different, right? Second is probing, right? The need will never be very obvious. You will have to ask certain questions to solidify the need. For example, a very simple question here can be, he, sir or madam, may I assume that today you are here to buy a pen? Okay, which means if the answer to this question is yes, then you are sorted, right? It's it's straightforward. You have to go to the product features and functionalities. So a little bit of probing, 
or probably may I understand that you know what is the type of work in terms of paperwork that you have to do in a given day or you may ask a question something like uh, what was the uh, last pen that you purchased or when was the last pen that you have purchased so things like that will help you solidify the need of the customer care. Step three, here, then you start the actual sales pitch. If you have the need identified, if you know that the person is wanting a pen to sign important documents, then you start with the features and benefits, right? Because now you know the kind of product the person is interested in. Now you know the sweet spot on which you have to hit. So suppose if you have not identified the persona and the need so far, what you would be doing till now, you would be pitching a feature. You would be either talking about the cost maybe, or you would be talking about how long the pen would write, or you would be talking about how smooth the pen is, or you would be talking about the service that the pen will provide. But the need can be something very different or one of these, and you don't need to pitch the others. So once you have the need identified, you start pitching. There might be a possibility and a very high possibility that till now also, after a very high assessment of the persona and some probing questions also, you are not able to identify the need. So this is where most of the times people resort to mm -hmm, and you know, uh, all these kind of expressions. This is where you have to try and generate the need. Okay. For example, in this case, you can say, that uh, you know you might be walking into a lot of business meetings and important discussions during the day you'd say yeah i have a lot of meetings a lot of discussions very well sir in that case many a times you would be told important things which you might be remembering right now you would say yeah there are always important dates numbers etc to be remembered so then you can say it's scientifically proven, you know, that when you write something along with listening, it registers better in your mind. So when you go to your next set of meetings or when you come back for these discussions, you would be much more effective than what you are now, right? Because a lot of time people will say, you know, I just remember everything or I don't need a pen. I have my laptop, etc. But when you tell them that when you write with your hand, you remember and it settles better in your mind, then you are much more effective in communicating it back again, right? So what we are doing here, we are generating the need. There was no need. The person clearly denied that I don't need the pen or I don't need, I don't need to make notes. But then you are generating the need, right? So this is a very important part. And believe me, so many times, almost, almost like half the times, you would be in a situation where the consumer will say, no, okay, I don't need, but then you generate the need. You make the product features enticing. You try to fit in the real gaps in the consumer's persona and there, therein where you generate them. So that's the third part, which is pitching. And then closing. Closing is, if you have gone so far, then closing is fairly simple. Uh, should I assume that the deal is done? some kind of a promissory note there, some kind of a closure, some kind of an acceptance uh, is needed to be able to say that the deal is closed. Also, when you have a happy closure, when you have a, a nice flow, you should use this opportunity to upset. Like for example, you, here what you can do is, uh, so, so why don't we, why don't I give you, uh, you know, instead of one pen, this complete box of five pens, it looks nice also. And, you know, you can use it as a nice gift also. Or you can say something, I have a notebook also, very nice glazed paper, etc. It will become a complete set. And why don't you keep both the things? So, especially in an interview scenario, when you make an effort to upsell along with the closing, the interviewer is going to be very, very impressed. because that's the dream salesperson of every company, right? Which just does not do what he's told, but which who kind of goes beyond the call of duty also and ends up selling more, right? 
So these are the four simple steps. You first understand the person in front of you. You ask few more questions to solidify the need in the uh, in your mind. Then you pitch. If you have the need, you directly go to the features and benefits. If you don't have the need, you generate the need. And then you close with an upsell. So that, guys, is how you sell a pen. Right? Now, uh, do we take the questions at the end or we can take questions now some? Or or I'll take five more minutes and then we can take all, all together. What works better for you guys? Okay. I think questions at the end only will be best because then uh, we won't disturb your flow and then we can write our stuff down. Okay. and get Thank you. Thank you. That is very considerate. Thank you. Uh, so that's the four-step process. Now for people on the other side, right? When you are hiring, because that was one of the questions that I had asked in the poll. Uh, what happens is you, we make, when this question is asked or when you are asking about the general, you know, when you are in the interview discussion, uh, typically most of the hiring managers or founders they tend to shortlist on the context that the person. Suppose I am hiring someone for a B2B sales. If I see a lot of B2B sales experiences on the CV, you know, this person has worked in Airtel enterprise selling. This person has worked in large B2B scenarios. He has worked in Nokri.com. He has worked in organizations like India Mart, etc. You will say, yeah, this guy has a lot of context. He understands what B2B ecosystem is. And that's what you shortlist. Fair. I think some kind of context requirement helps if you are going for hiring of lateral individuals, right? Or maybe if you are hiring for freshers also, some kind of context related to some kind of project, etc. helps. But a lot of times people base the entire shortlist on just context. This is a red flag. Secondly, when the discussion is going on, when the interview is going on, for a candidate, what is the easiest thing to talk about, right? For any of us, if I were to ask you anything regarding your professional experience, the easiest thing to talk about is your experience. You know, I was working here and I did this and I did so, I was selling this product. This was the target. These were the KPIs. Then I went to this role. Here the target was this. These were the KPIs. I was responsible for this geography. I was reporting to this person. These were the challenges in that role. And then, then so on and so forth. What happens is when you are especially founder of a, uh, a new company or you are a new manager, it is very easy to get overwhelmed with so, so much context and experience. And I made this mistake a lot of times. At all levels of hiring, I would just say uh, so much of market experience, so much of team management experience, so much of uh, you know enterprise sales experience, so much of consumer selling experience, so much of direct sales experience must be good. And that is where the pitfall is. And what you missed when you were being overwhelmed by so much of context and experience was success. You know, and we don't ask enough questions on success. So sell me a pen gives you some window into understanding the probability of success of an individual, right? It tells you that if the person is able to sell the pen right, this guy would probably be successful in the market because if you have done some selling yourself and you are liking this person who's selling in front of you, you will be able to correlate that, yeah, this guy can be successful. But what about the past experiences? How do people evaluate success? In most of the interviews, they will just look at certain awards. Okay, you have got this award, you were top, this, this, this. But they don't understand the process by which the person achieved success. Very few times interviewers emphasize on this point. I would strongly encourage you, and this is my learning from so many interviews that I've taken, that ask the candidate to explain the route that they have taken to become successful. Okay? What, what are the kind of questions uh, that you know you will ask 
to understand this um, route to success. For example, somebody said that, you know, uh, I was the number one region uh, or I was the number one city in terms of uh, the market share on the counters that our product was placed, right? Fair, right? So, so probably uh, this guy, let's say he was selling ketchup and he's saying that in my geography or in my region, say North region, my city was number one where we had the ketchup on the most number of counters. Now, this can be a function of a lot of other things. This can be a function of the that other cities were launched later. This can be a function of the fact that this guy had more resources or this can be a function of the fact that, you know, he was just lucky. But that does not guarantee his success in your endeavor. That does not guarantee his success in your role that you are assigned. So you have to assign what did you do? Then this guy will start telling you that, you know, what I did was I identified the main markets where ketchup is sold. I identified the main counters. I went to them. I spoke to them about how my ketchup is different from the five other ketchups they are uh, keeping. I also gave them free samples. I also kept going back to their stores and ask, kept asking them for reviews. And when the ketchup started to sell at their stores is when I started asking the nearby stores that, you know, the market leader is selling my ketchup. So why are you guys not selling my ketchup? Okay, so this is now a process. This guy has a plan. He made a plan and he has executed that plan and then he has been given an award basis the success of that activity. Versus if you talk about I am the best ketchup seller, you know, that you might have ever seen. I have done ketchup selling in five different companies. Everywhere where I have sold ketchup, the company has become the market leader. This does not tell you that how will he achieve success in your product. Okay. And conversely, I would like to take this back to the candidates who are appearing for interviews that you need to talk about your success stories when you are giving interviews. You just don't have to talk about, uh, because an interviewer may forget asking this, but if you yourself uh, interject and proactively talk about the process by which you achieve success, your selection is guaranteed. Right? Because this ability to give your process a structure, this itself is not present in so many individuals, right? Uh, so this is uh, what I would like to talk about, you know. So uh, I think we should, we, we can uh, discuss more and maybe I would like to take some questions and in the process of answering them, uh, talk about more topics. Yeah. So uh, I, I, do uh, you know a lot of these uh, kind of simple structured answers to complex questions asked in interviews and I make small videos and share them on YouTube. There's this channel uh, that I have recently made Nokri Pakki. Uh, you should go and maybe you know uh, subscribe it and so that you get a continued learning and I share something every week. Anybody who wants to reach out to me directly for helping with framing of an answer or you know some kind of concept or some kind of hiring mistake that you are making and you want to uh, sort of bounce ideas or introspect uh, you know i am available on call and email that's it guys yeah open for questions Can you explain uh, once again how to close a sale confidently? Uh, how to write email to suspects or prospects? Is there any specific portal? Okay. How can we make a career in sales? Okay, fine. Uh, I'll take from top down. Uh, how to close a sale confidently? Uh, Sai, can you give me an a ecosystem? And then I can uh, maybe talk about it or I can make, or I'll make one myself. If, if you have faced something, any real life situation, if you have faced, uh, that will be even better for me. You can maybe unmute and. Hello, sir. Uh, thank you for this opportunity. 
So are you talking about a product or a service because it's very different in product. Product. product okay so in product see there is a defined margin that is available with you it also depends on the kind of market that you are in see if i tell you here that you have to sell at a fixed price it does not always work right believe me uh, you have to offer discounts you have to offer rebates but the chal- but the thing here is when you go in for this kind of a sale when you are going into this kind of consumer certain bit of research always help there are certain kind of customers which you know will do a negotiation right would you agree with me here yes right? sir absolutely and in that those cases what you need to go in to the discussion is figuring out your minima in mind suppose you are pitching a product at 100 rupees you know this person is a very hard negotiator you know your price is say 70 bucks you need to go and say that my minima is 85 or my minima is 80 if you don't if you are not confident about your minima then you will never be able to do a negotiation a successful negotiator is one who knows that where his negotiation ends right so so that so so when every discussion is going on in every point you will keep making uh, arguments in the same direction so that that i think is very important know your minima in 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 a case and at the end of the day stick to that minima uh what what always works is a personalized testimonial uh, for example in this case of a pen i can one can say that i have used the pen and i can vouch for the you know quality and durability of pen or what also works is say after sales experience that you know if there is any issue you can always give me a call i will be around people don't use personal testimonials and after sales promises enough they feel it's too cliche but they always work okay got it sir thank you so much for it it helps to tell you that you know it's just not the money that you are spending you spend and then there is a little bit of this factor that you know if you send this money elsewhere maybe you may not have that testimonial with you maybe you may not have that guarantee with you right but here i am offering those also to you Okay. Make sense? All right, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, we have uh, Dr. Upendra Kasam. Uh, hi, Upendra. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. I'm able to hear. Yes. Uh, what What is the uh, uh, context of these emails? As in, you are writing uh, cold emails for eliciting some kind of, uh, uh, you know, uh, Uh, proposal or something uh, or these are uh, something uh, identified list and they are basis some kind of engagement activity that you have done and gathered the emails absolutely you are right uh, we found out some database yeah uh, yeah market and uh, we would like to pitch the we know the right audience but uh, okay. we need to write a uh, appropriate uh, mails written to organizations or mails written to individuals no this is b2b market organization okay. great now uh, i'll tell you a trick and this is a trick which has worked i there no there's no specific portal or something that at least i am aware of okay uh, so in writing a email there are three steps probably which are involved a you have to identify the email ids right uh, of the people to whom you have to write the mail b you have to draft the email and see you have to follow when once, once you have sent the email right agree with me so far yeah yeah as you mentioned uh, we identified the database correct and uh, uh, yeah 
yeah. So what happens? Say suppose you are writing email uh, for, uh, let's say supplying. Uh, let's say you are writing email for uh, sending uh, some kind of, uh, let's say my business, let's say, let's say content writing. If I'm writing email to offer content services that we can write blogs, emailers, you know, et cetera for you. Now, what every theory tells is that the right person to approach for this email is the either the marketing head or the content head of the company. What, what, Instead, we will end up writing is in the email, I would write the email to four or five people in the organization. And in every email, I will mention the names of the other three. So, for example, if say uh, uh, A, B and C are three people in one organization that uh, which organization uh, I am targeting, I will write a mail to A saying that uh, you know, I am Priyank and I am, you know, I'm from Podium Pro and we offer content writing services. I have also written to B and C and I'm looking forward to the right person in the organization who can help me with this content writing work. If you are the right person, please respond. If you are not the right person, please redirect me to the right person. Now, what happens in this when I'm writing to A with B and C, C's name mentioned in the mail, three things happen. One, the person realizes that this guy has written to two more people who may not be the right person and I am the right person. So there is some kind of an obligation he feels to respond. Secondly, he feels that you have done enough research. Thirdly, he feels you may actually know someone also in the organization and hence his tendency to respond increases. Was I able to... Uh, uh, give this tip to you in a clear manner, Upin? Yeah, yeah. Basically, you are uh, trying to uh, position your targeting uh, customer and also copying the colleagues or seniors so that yes. you are giving the importance to that day so that naturally respond because of uh, not you, because of his colleagues' uh, peers. Yes, yes, yes. He can ignore you, but he cannot, he, he cannot ignore his peers, his team members or his superiors, right? Tomorrow, if I'm writing to the marketing head and I've also said that I have written to your CEO also, the CEO can any day ask the marketing, hey, did you get that, uh, you know, content mail? It seemed interesting. Did you respond to it? The marketing guy would know I have ignored it. Achha, why would you ignore it? We discussed in the last meeting, we need a content service provider. You should have responded. The marketing guy say, okay, maybe I should have responded to it. Okay. So this is something which works. Maybe you can give it a try. Great, great. Is there any template available formats or ready-made templates so that I can tweak the content? Uh, like, uh, is there if a you can change? share your template with me, I can help you improve it. Because mine is a very, very specific. It's a very simple. I just write two mailers that this two lines, this is the service I am offering. These are the people I have written to. And if you are the right person, respond or else guide me to the right person. Just four lines. Okay, you, you don't uh, need to introduce your company a little bit and what you're trying no, no, to offer. Just, just, just two lines. If he's interested, because see, these are all, you know, bulk emailers, right? Yes. So yes. if you attach a long sample set, you attach a PDF, you attach a presentation, you write about the founder's history, about all the clients, just whatever you write, just it should be two, three lines. Uh, a 15 second read is what I would recommend. Okay. But, the first uh, emailer. Okay, what you're trying to say, maybe three, four lines, two, three, four lines, we need to close it rather than the writing at least you 10 to 12 uh, lines. Of course, I'm not talking about the attachments, but yeah. in the uh, content also within uh, two, three lines only, less than 15 seconds. Uh, uh, if something interested, he'll reply, reply it. Otherwise, it should be a CTA, a call to action at the end of it that uh, let's fix up a meeting or let me know if you are interested. It, it there should be a call to action. It cannot be just ending with this is the information. Now do what you want to do. Okay. Would you like to have a discussion or would you like to set up yeah, a meeting? Yeah, yeah. And you should ask for a meeting. Okay. Okay. Great. Great tips. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. We need to everyone just subscribe. Thank you, Edi. I hope you like what I share later on. Ayushi, how can we make a career in sales? Very good. Uh, Ayushi, are you there? Yeah, I'm there. Very good evening. Very good evening. Aishu, what are you doing right now? 
Uh, right now, I'm a business development manager only. So it just started, it's been two years to me in this career. So I just want to know how exactly I can grow up in this. And and which industry are you in? EdTech. Sorry? Education industry, EdTech. Oh, EdTech. Okay, good. Yeah. My favorite industry. You have been for two years as a BDM in EdTech? Uh, no, I started from an executive only. So I got the promotion. Then right now I'm working as a manager. Okay, good. Yes. Great. Uh, so, how do you make a career in change? First of all, I think what you need to understand is the learning part in building a sales career is heavily, heavily underrated. Okay. Uh, people prefer going to a same type of work environment where they have been working before. For example, if you have been working in a uh, uh, a particular FMCG sales, you may want to just keep working in FMCG sales. In those cases also, people grow, they become, you know, head of sales, etc. But then there are very, very few. The percentage drops drastically. The growth typically stagnates. And if the industry collapses or if the industry is not going through a great turn, then, you know, you are in for a tough ride. What you need to do is you need to at a certain period and only that period is when your learning stops, change your stream, change the learning. Now, when you when I say change the stream, within edtech also, you can you know go in different, different types of edtech sales. Within fintech, you can go into different, different types of product sales. You can go into different, different types of teams. Some kind of a change should happen, right? In the first... Uh, first assignment that I was given, second assignment, when I was taking care of the broadband business uh, in Indore uh, region, uh, my team was a team of uh, six channel managers. Uh, I was 24 years of age at that point of time and all these six channel managers were 45 plus. They had been in Indore, in Airtel broadband, selling the same product with the same channel partners for 15 years. Or, or 12 years at least, they had grown. Their salary, they started with probably uh, uh, 20,000 rupees salary and they had reached to some 70, 80,000 rupees salary. They were stable, but they were not learning. I, I tried to go behind them and tell them that you should shift. One of those guys, he moved into another stream. He first moved into another company of broadband only. From there, he moved to another product of that company and then he moved to a different sector altogether. The other five guys, they continued there. And out of that, uh, four of them are in some kind of trouble, let me say, today. Because, you know, the, the broadband industry is not moving that far. The, the sale has completely shifted to online kind of sales. So, so that uh, you need to keep moving. You need to put yourself in uncomfortable situations. When you are in early stages, when, in your, when you are in your 20s, explore different geographies, live outside of your home, uh, make new networks. Because unless you change industries, you will not make networks. I have a huge network uh, on, on just, just LinkedIn. If it is any reflection, I have some 8,000 people connected and they are not random connections. There are, there are connections in where I have interacted with them in some way or the other, right? So this network helps you in every way. So take every option which comes in front of you, which gives you an incremental learning. Trust me, when your learning will grow, when your diversification will grow, money will follow. Okay. All right. So your suggestion is just like, you know, I should try on in different industry or particularly. In, uh... You should try and keep going on learning. Like what are you selling right now? In tech, if I may ask, and to whom are you selling? Uh, I'm, I'm into the B2C market only. Okay. So you yeah. are selling the educational courses to parents? Yes, right, right, right. So maybe you sell the same education package to schools. Okay. Or to the parents, you start selling some kind of other long-term engagement program or some kind of a workshop. Right. That is also a learning, right? Right. So you don't have to necessarily leave your current organization or leave your current sector. That you can do two years later also. But if you are not learning something new every... And my... Uh, the shifting point, I believe, is 18 months in a typical same type of environment. For 18 months, because you, you take 3-4 months to learn, then mm. you uh, establish processes and all in another 3-4 months, and then you should build on that success for one year. 
so that 18 month is a good enough period and then we should move to some other challenge is what i believe all right thank, thank you so much it was really a good thing yeah uh piyush tips on making a sales team oh my favorite topic if there are different types of candidates that we should put in team and not just the wolves hi piyush are you here piyush can you hear me Piyush there on the call. I see Piyush. Okay, I'll wait and answer this question later on if Piyush decides to come back. Uh, VD, uh, VD, are you there on the call? While making a shift from sales role to marketing manager, strategic marketing consultant, what do hiring manager looks and how to brace myself to make this shift? Thank you in advance. Hi, Vidya. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm on the call. You are a sales manager? I previously worked as a sales consultant, actually, uh, uh, for three years. And then uh, I have taken a break for a year and prepared for a couple of exams. I mean, government exams. And now I'm currently in my second year of a BA. Hmm. So why do you want to make this shift? You felt when you were a sales manager that these guys are doing a better job or a more important job? Yeah, actually, I wanted to uh, stick to the desk job kind of thing. Okay. I want to get into the strategy place. Okay. So, uh, because I, I have a very clear point of view here on this, that at any point of time, you know, these jobs, the desk jobs or the strategic jobs that you are talking about, they come to you naturally at the right time. Okay. So, no so that that's... Uh, at least in my career and career of so many people that I have worked with, these jobs, you know, the central roles, the strategic roles, the growth roles, they come to you at a particular point of time. So you don't have to worry about going there. If you are interested in it, if you are really working towards it, it will come to you. So if today you are getting a sales job also, I don't know your limitation or constraint. Maybe it's a health reason or some kind of location constraint reason, etc. If those are the cases, then it's a different scenario. But if just because you want to work in this one, they come to you. They come to every guy in sales eventually. Okay? That's one thing. Uh, secondly, when you move from here to here, the hiring manager will always look at first your success story. If you are a habitual, if you are someone who is habituated to success, right? Then they will, then you will succeed in this role also. It is a combination of perseverance, your IQ, your acumen, and all those kind of things which leads you to success. Okay? And then yeah, there are it. basic things which is understanding of the job role, understanding of the requirements, having kind of collaborated on similar kind of projects in some way while you were doing a sales role. So for example, suppose you are uh, going into a company which is into new product launches, right? And it is hiring a growth manager for new product launches. In your sales stint or in your sales uh, career, have you done some kind of new product launches and what, what were your learnings there? If you have to okay. sell, then you can do a good job of it at the HO level also. All right, got it. Got it? Yeah. Yeah. No, thanks, Priyanka. Uh, Dr. Upen, how to write? I said this I have answered. Kavya Vaishnavi. How can we shift careers in mid age? What is mid-age Kavya, if you can explain? Hi, sir. Hi, sir. It's Kavya here. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Uh, yeah. Thank you so much. I'm really happy to join the session. Sir, mid-age in the sense, I'll, uh, I'll tell you. So it's been around 3.8 years of my career that I've been doing sales. So my problem is right now I'm into solution sales. I'm working in a corporate company which actually provides business services to corporate people. So basically, this is a B2B. So okay. for example, right now, I want to shift my career to SaaS-based company. Hmm. So my problem is I'm doing the research. What are the different kind of SaaS, SaaS based companies that are coming into market, be it expense management software, be it AI related software, or be it database management software or different kinds of software. So for example, then what's happening is like, for me, I'm not getting shortlisted within the application also. There are a few companies which I have attended. I have cracked the interview also, but there are certain target companies to me I don't know why my application itself is not getting shortlisted. 
So they are saying that you need something like a right now you told that you have to shift to different industries. I want to shift into B two B only, which is like a solution services, but still I want to shift to shift my career to SaaS based companies. I'm unable to get through the resume shortlisting itself. I'm not getting that basic first level of screening call also. Whereas I have sold my services to C C V O C V O S, and I was able to make the conversation to. that level of people and i was able to convince them i had a few sort of story in my company itself i bought the basically bought a very big branch to my company but still i'm unable to somehow my application is not getting shortlisted so can you please share some tips for this see this actually if i were to really really help you here i need to under i need to have a look at your cv and i need to be able to look at the jobs that you have applied and gotten rejected also it's a little difficult to do it here uh, okay sir but see whatever tip i will give you now will be a very generic tip it may okay, be something sir. you have already used right mm -hmm. but right, can, right. Yeah. real the real help i can do is you know if you write to me with the role that you have applied to and the cv that you sent for that role okay you know, sir definitely time and uh, revert to you see you okay. have to uh, see cv shortlist and i am assuming you are talking about a better and bigger company now right exactly so the 250 300 people might have applied to that role right right the cv shortlisting uh, is a uh, four to five second job by the way you know for the recruiter this you okay. must have understood by now four to five exactly. seconds more than that is not so on your cv uh, how verbose is the cv and how strongly is the fitment to this role getting highlighted that probably defines because if you have worked in smaller companies then you have to downplay the company that you have worked and you have to play up the uh, related work that you have done and also always the success story you know that how strongly is it coming out that you whatever venture you get into you have been a success into that and and probably a little bit uh if if that is coming out in your cv i don't see a reason why you won't get even a cv shortlist because you are in the same industry you have the exactly. amazon you have the right uh, ctc bracket and the right work experience bracket and the right, right. sort of attitudes from which you have graduated because certain companies have those criteria also right right exactly they are asking for the same industry experience you should be only from the saas based background If it's a fintech company, so it should be only. For example, I don't want to name the I don't want to name the company, but it's just like a expense management software. Even he is asking me like a like actually I got a screening call. Then I've explained him. For for them, they are looking for a SaaS based to come uh, candidate. Have you I was tried like, uh, going via some references? Uh, I have tried so. I have tried going via references. Sometimes it's actually like hiring are getting free. But if I went through the interview, I was able to select. That's the reason I'm unable to understand. Why SaaS based companies are unable to consider my profile because I'm into the similar industry. It's not that from FMCG industry I want to shift to B two B software selling. Not from the from this industry I want to shift into FMCG industry because both of them are not related. You need to have some uh, experience so, or some knowledge. I I can have a look at the resume, Kabir. Yeah. And sure, also sure, the Definitely. second part is uh, you know just uh, maybe look at uh, going via references. Uh, That's really nice, sir. Thank you so much for the insight. I'll definitely write to you. Thank you, sir. Okay. Uh, Udya Kumar, I am a technical person, means to say mechanical engineer. Where how can shift into a sales career with the same momentum in terms of salary, etc. Mechanical engineers do all the time very well in any field. Uh, Udya, are you there on the call? Hello. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I am on the call. Good evening. Many, good evening. How many years of experience you have, Udya? Sir, so I have five point six years of experience in. mechanical industry means project industry where i do servicing installation of equipments okay uh, what kind of equipments are these uh, actually uh, previously i have worked for schindler elevators sure they are manufacturer for lifts escalators yeah i know i know schindler was... elevators yeah perfect Yes. So why don't you start uh, selling Schindler elevators what's stopping you from doing so actually sir i was working as service engineer okay Okay, then I move to now. Now I am working in Goldrich Carbon. Okay. They are providing solutions for supply chains, interlogistic supply chains for manufacturing industries like FMCG, pharmaceutical, paint industry. Sorry, sorry, what exactly are you doing now? Uh, 
uh, I am doing the same role as an installation engineer, but the different company, yeah. Godrej Corber, where hmm. the Godrej is providing solutions to customers like FMCG, pharmaceuticals, to so store you know, their products. Do you know the sales manager in this company? Do you know the sales team leaders? Yes, I know. Why don't you go with them and ask them that uh, they allow you to shadow the sales team uh, for uh, a couple of days in a week? In a week. Actually, sir, it to... is uh, it is quite not possible due to we are working in a remote locations. Means we are working in projects. They are working from office. They will have a, means minimal travel to sites. So that is the problem. So if you want, if I want to go to office, that will not my scope of work. So, so entire selling the... by your company sales team is done remotely. Yes, remotely they visit customers for okay. their sales. Sure. So the so, interaction between us is very less. I mean, that's okay. So that's mm. what I'm asking you to increase. That why don't you okay. go to the head of and this has happened with me by the way. Okay. I have had people from operations as a leader approaching okay. that I want to. Uh, you know, do some sales. I said, okay. okay, why don't you do some sales? Why don't you take out more time? You'll have to see, you can't compromise on your current work, right? Right, right, you right. You have to uh, pull in, put in extra hours to work with right. the sales guys, right. participate with them in certain calls, right. gather some experience, and then uh, once you gather that experience, ask them that why, why don't you be allowed to make a pitch to one of the clients? Right, right. Or maybe make a mock pitch to the head of business itself that this is how I will try to sell. Why don't you give me a three month assignment with a certain number to try and do sales? Okay. Like yeah. an learning an internship, like an internship in the in the organization. Yeah. And for that three oh. months, you might be willing to take a lesser salary or whatever the company is willing to offer you. And okay. you can always go back. Right, right. right. See right, that's, the, that's the safest way with the with the harness attached to you. Oh right, right, sure. What Actually, you? within within the company, it is possible to change functions easily compared yeah. to okay. all the time, all the time. Okay. You, you should be just willing to say to them that what will it take for me to take this bet for you to give me this opportunity. Do you want me to take lesser salary in this period? Do you want me to work overtime in this period? Do you want me to, you know, anything? I am sure any leader in your organization will appreciate your heart there. Right. My interest, definitely they will appreciate my interest. Okay. okay. Thank you, sir. Right, and let me know, please, so that I can recommend your example next time onwards to other people. Okay, sure, sir. Thank you. I will do it. Okay. Uh, Narendra Singh, how to close order and protect your region? What kind of region you have to protect, Narendra? Sir, basically, we are working in a sales and service uh, industry. Hmm. Hello. So, so what? Hello. Yeah, yeah, I can hear you loud and clear. My voice is coming, sir. Yes. Uh, sir, basically, we are working in sales and service in industry. Uh, what hap What is happening in the current scenario is that uh, someone from Kolkata is quoting in uh, Gujarat uh, and uh, uh, with the price of uh, negative uh, negative margins. So sure. how can we protect uh, our region and uh, close the order? So you start quoting negative margins in Kolkata, no? Yes, yes. Do that. They will they will get uh, on the back foot. Uh, sir, but testing? but the order execution will be difficult for us. Why is it easy for them? Uh, they know uh, they uh, they can't compete or convert uh, this type. Sorry, they know that the order will not be closed with uh, with them, so they they are uh, uh, putting uh, us uh, on on the backward. Okay, so so you do the same thing to them, no? You also don't close the order. What's your harm? Okay. Yeah. Is it the same company, same dealership, or what? Yeah, is same, it? same, same dealership, same company uh, from Kolkata. They are quoting. In your manager, class. your both of yours manager is the same. No, no, managers are different. Uh, 
organizations are dif uh, different but the channel uh, channel partners are same uh, means uh, same uh, same oem they uh, they are catering and we are also catering the uh, same oem okay yeah just just they are doing it for the sake of fun they are just yes uh, yes how to then do there is, there is no other way you have to do it you you can obviously talk to them first that you know we have noticed this practice of yours and uh, it's not healthy in any way there's no reason that why you should be doing it and if you continue to do this we will respond in the same tone okay yeah see aggression is a sales guys natural trait you should not let it go yeah yeah okay okay sir okay thank you okay uh yeah this i have answered voice not audible i think ketan just check I, others are able to hear me what is pre sales role and responsibility what do you mean by sales enablement related content like blogs uh hi uh, dr open can you hear me yeah yeah so pre sales is uh, every function which supports the sales so for example if you are pitching to consumers uh, identifying the consumer uh, leads references generating an interest all these qualifies as pre sales even preparing uh, pitch documents brochures etc they also qualify sometimes in certain companies as pre sales okay uh, sales enablement related content like blogs emailers these are uh, these are things which help your organization to get leads okay so suppose i am selling pens and i have a lot of content on my website which talks about different types of pens so when people will be looking up for buying a pen options they are likely to land on my websites because because of a lot of content on my website being related to pens my seo would have gone so we help uh, companies improve these chances by giving them high quality content does that answer your question sir yeah but i i would like to understand total how many types of uh, uh, you know uh, sales enablement uh, artifacts are deliverable like for example Achha, you like that okay one kind and uh, website is, is one see, what is uh, what is the in trend is social media it depends on the product right so b2b product... this is b2b again this is b also b2b also has specific uh, ways to reach out there are specific pages on social media port, uh, portals which talk about those specialized product sets for example if you are uh, making uh, something out of paper or different types of paper you will find pages which talk about you know paper import of paper export of paper types of paper so publishing uh, you know interesting facts new type of machinery new variants in uh, interesting pricing with attractive images short videos these will help attract the uh, attention of potential customers to your uh, product and company so that social media similarly blogs similarly business emailers uh, emailers as we discussed earlier you know very important to draft it very important to send it the right way uh, and then there are other specialized content like for example you may talk about research you may publish a research paper from your organization which talks about uh, you know how good or how specialized you are at you know paper as a product does that help uh, yeah certain yeah certain yeah uh, please guide me on the importance of network and how to make it in a useful hi amarjit are you there on the call <coughs> rajeshwar also has the same question hello yes sir hello sir hello hello sir i'm oh. i'm rajeshwar okay great so what kind of job are you doing okay so you ask me uh, you have question for me right yeah yeah oh, all right okay, okay. No i can problem. guide you on so, the next uh, sure definitely so currently i'm working as a senior production leader senior and uh, senior production leader okay yeah so i just wanted to know like you know uh, about the network because uh, i have seen not many people even though my colleagues they are also you know they are also saying the same thing that you know for this if you really want to survive in the corporate sector you want to yeah. groom yourself 
for a career, right? So we need good network. Sure. And for network, how we can go ahead and approach for a network for uh, for the social media or any job for the, uh, you know, the application? Because I don't have much idea about this. And what, what, what do you mean to, like, I just wanted to say, what do you understand? Uh, because basically, I don't know the purpose of network and what's the importance of network. So these are my basic questions, because these, okay. which I you know, okay. get it. See, uh, purpose of network is very simple. When you are connected with more people, you get to know about a lot more opportunities. Suppose you have to sell something and you have a network of people who are interested in buying that thing, obviously you'll get more sales. Suppose you want to learn something and you have a network of people who know more about that thing, then the network teaches you, right? So from basics such as negotiation, best pricing, market opportunities, new things, network helps you in every way. That's one. Okay. How to build a network is, uh, first of all, you have to build a network where you are, right? So okay. wherever in the organization, the city, the geography, the forum that you are participating in, uh, talk to people, connect to people, uh, understand people, take interest in people's works, right? And, okay. and that probably is the first step uh, in building a network. Second, participate in more activities. For example, I am participating in this discussion. I am, you know, uh, talking to you all. You are getting to know me. You are understanding that this guy uh, is not just talking about his work, he's probably talking about what we want also. So probably it will be a good idea tomorrow to, you know, speak with him uh, for something okay. else. And when you speak with him, I may find huh. you as a good candidate to work for, or I may want to work for you, you may want to work for me in any way. So yeah, that's how network builds. All right, okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, sir, by the way, my question was... Yes, tell me. Uh, sir, by the my question is that uh, if we have to make a network from uh, from other peoples, so how we can uh, we can say कि मतलब उनको अपने भरोसा कैसे होगा? नहीं तो network बनाने के लिए भरोसा थोड़ा ना करना पड़ता है. Network बनाने के लिए तो बस usually sir usually sir होता ही है ना कि मतलब मैं जब किसी से network बनाने की बात करता हूँ तो मतलब लोग मुझसे ना मतलब मेरी बात को ज़्यादा विश्वास नहीं करते और मेरी बात आप क्या बात करते हो आप उनसे नहीं है आप उनसे कुछ मांग रहे हो क्या आप तो ये बोल रहे हो ना कि मैं आपसे जुड़ना चाहता हूँ yes sir basically यही होता है तो वो क्या बोलते हैं कि नहीं हमें नहीं जुड़ना आपसे yes sir अभी अभी जैसे मैं बाद में ऑनलाइन मेथड्स के थ्रू भी किस लोगों से जुड़ना चाहता हूँ नॉन टेंडर एंड जैसे इंस्टाग्राम पे मेरे खुद का राइटर राइटिंग का पोइट्री वगैरह का चैनल है सो उसपे भी मतलब इतने ज़्यादा खैर व्यूज नहीं आते और व्यूज की बात की अलग चीज़ होगी फॉलोअर्स या कि आप चाह हाँ तो देखिए नेटवर्क बिल्ड होने में थोड़ा टाइम लगता है थोड़ा सा फिनेस और एक फिनिशिंग टच आना पड़ता है ठीक है क्योंकि कई और हर तरह के लोग आपको मिलेंगे कई ऐसे लोग मिलेंगे जो आपसे इंटरेस्टेड होंगे बात करने में कई ऐसे भी लोग होंगे थोड़े थोड़े रिजर्व्ड होंगे तो हर बार हर जगह आपको सक्सेस नहीं मिलेगी कि आप किसी को अप्रोच करो और वो आपको लाइक करें अप्रिशिएट करें आपको रिवर्ट करें बट कई बार आपको सक्सेस मिलेगी भी तो क्या आपका सक्सेस रेट आपको इंप्रूव होना चाहिए आप अभी दस लोगों को अप्रोच करते हैं दो मानते हैं क्या ये दो से तीन हो रहा है तीन से चार हो रहा है ये आप उस काम में कितने अच्छे हैं कितने टाइम से उसको कर रहे हैं और कैसे उसको प्रेजेंट करते हैं इन चीजों पे भी डिपेंड करेगा ओके सर तो थोड़ा सा ग्रेविटी जब आती है आपकी बातों में तो वो लोग उसको ज्यादा सीरियसली लेते हैं ये होता है तो आपको पेशेंस रखना है एफर्ट को इसमें रोकना नहीं है करते जाओ और अच्छी चीजें बनाते जाइए और अच्छी पोइट्री लिखते जाइए और सारे लोगों का पोस्ट करते जाइए चीजें मूव होंगी ओके सर Akash Tyagi, sir, I am an MBA student, recently appeared three to four interviews, but it is hard me to crack out. Which one of the interviews was Akash or was it different? Good evening, sir. Good evening. Thank you. Sir, basically, sales-based interviews, sir. Digital interviews based on sales, sir. 
ओके सो क्या हुआ मतलब किसी ने कुछ बताया आपको कि क्यों नहीं ले रहे वो आपको कोई फीडबैक मिला कहीं पे उन्हें फीडबैक नहीं देते सर वो मतलब इंटरव्यू में बता देते हैं रिजल्ट को बाद में अपीयर करेंगे डिस्पोज करेंगे और प्लेसमेंट ड्राइव वगैरह होती है जो प्लेसमेंट सेल वगैरह होती है उनके थ्रू हमें रिजल्ट डिस्पोज किया जाता है सर हाँ जी हाँ जी आपको आपका कुछ सेल्फ असेसमेंट है कि इस चीज में मैं कमजोर पड़ रहा हूँ कुछ तो आपको थोड़ा आइडिया होगा यस सर यस सर सर ऐसा जो आज का आपका टॉपिक है सर उन्होंने सेल्स भी कराया था मेरे को केन जो था उन्होंने सेल्स हाँ। करने को बोला था मेरे से सर और एक था एक कोर्स वगैरह भी था वो सेल करने को बोला था क्या बोला था कोर्स कोर्स होता है टेक का कोर्स वगैरह रहता है सर वो सेल करना था उनको तो मतलब कुछ क्वेश्चन ऐसे पूछते हैं सर मतलब वो पूछते थे शॉर्ट टर्म गोल्स वगैरह क्या रहते हैं जो सर क्वेश्चन रहते हैं इंटरव्यूअर के लिए कि शॉर्ट टर्म गोल्स क्या रहेंगे आपके फ्यूचर के आ, और आ, हम आपको क्यों हायर करें सर इस टाइप के क्वेश्चन थे उनके सर ठीक है मेरा जीडी वगैरह क्लियर हो रहा है लेकिन सर इंटरव्यू वगैरह क्लियर नहीं हो पा रहा सर हाँ तो ठीक है होगा क्लियर होगा आपने ये सारे आंसर की तैयारी करी है आपके पास ये आंसर लिखे हुए हैं अपने सारे सर मैं अभी यही करता हूँ ऐसे जो कुछ भी मुझे पूछते हैं तो मैं घर आके सर्च करता हूँ फिर उनको देखता हूँ किस तरीके से मैं रख सकता हूँ अच्छे तरीके पुट कर सकता हूँ फिर मैं वो पूछते हैं तो मैं तैयार करता हूँ उनको यहाँ घर आने के बाद में सर के आप, बाद में। कोई आपका स्पारिंग पार्टनर बोलते हैं इसको है ना जैसे बॉक्सिंग जो लोग करते हैं ना वो किसी के साथ ऐसे प्रैक्टिस करते हैं तो आपका कोई ऐसा कोई आपके ब्रदर कोई दोस्त ऐसा है जिसके साथ आप ये आंसर मॉक प्रैक्टिस करते हो प्रैक्टिस एंड डिस्कस कर लेते हैं सर क्या पूछा गया है इंटरव्यू अगर मैं आपसे क्या पूछा आपने कैसे रिप्लाई करा प्रैक्टिस करिए या अपना ही वीडियो रिकॉर्ड करके बार बार देखिए वो बहुत हेल्प करता है सुनेगा ऐसा लगेगा थोड़ी घिसी पिटी ट्रिप लग, ट्रिप लगेगी आपको कि ये तो आ, सब लोग बताते हैं बट हेल्प करता है देखिए अगर आप सिलेक्ट नहीं हो रहे हैं और कोई और सिलेक्ट हो रहा है तो यानी वो उस चीज में आपसे थोड़ा सा बेटर है है ना आप बेटर कैसे होंगे आप प्रैक्टिस से बेटर होंगे और सर कोई टिप्स मतलब हमें जहां मुझे काम करने की जरूरत हो मैं तो हर चीज में ना स्ट्रक्चर बनाता हूँ कि भाई जैसे मुझे जैसे आप ये स्क्रीन पे भी देख रहे हैं ये क्वेश्चन जो आपसे पूछा गया कि भाई हमें क्यों हायर करें ये इसका वीडियो जो मैंने बनाया ये वीडियो में और कुछ नहीं एक स्ट्रक्चर है कि भाई अगर मुझे हायर करना है तो मुझे कैसे स्टेप वन स्टेप टू अभी आपने पेन वाला देखा कैसे मैंने आंसर का स्ट्रक्चर आपको दिया है ना कि पहले सामने वाले को समझे फिर थोड़ा सा प्रोब करें फिर पिच करें फिर क्लोज करें और उसमें अपसेलिंग करें तो अगर थोड़ा सा स्ट्रक्चर आपके दिमाग में होगा और आप उस स्ट्रक्चर पे बार 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 प्रैक्टिस करेंगे तो आप उसमें फ्लुएंट हो जाएंगे तो आपको बहुत प्रैक्टिस करने पड़ेंगे ये बहुत ये सात आठ जो क्वेश्चन है ना आपकी स्ट्रेंथ एंड वीकनेस क्या है आप अपने आप को पांच साल में कहा देखते हैं अपने बारे में थोड़ा सा बताइए हम आपको क्यों हायर करें आ, ये पेन बेच के दिखाए ये बहुत ही कॉमन क्वेश्चन है और इनका तैयारी किए बिना मतलब जो बेस्ट से बेस्ट लोग भी होते हैं ना टॉप एमबीए कॉलेजेस में आईएम्स में एक्सएल में इन सब बड़े बड़े कॉलेजेस में भी इन क्वेश्चंस के लिए बच्चे रातों रातों भर तैयारी करते हैं और फिर वो इसको क्रैक कर पाते हैं आप सुन रहे मेरी बात यस सर यस सर बिल्कुल सर तो तैयारी ही तरीका है बाकी अगर आप मुझे थोड़ा सा डिटेल में एक ई लिखेंगे कि किस कंपनी में आपने इंटरव्यू दिया था और वहां पे क्या क्वेश्चन पूछे गए और आपने क्या आंसर दिया था अगर आप वो भी मुझे लिख के भेजेंगे तो मैं शायद उसमें आपको रिवर्ट कर दूं कि इसको थोड़ा सा ऐसे और ट्वीट कर लें सर ऐसा इसका इम्पोर्टेंस रहेगा कि जो जेडी हमें हमारे लिए आया जा रहा है उसके हिसाब से हम अपनी जो रिज्यूमे रहता है उसको मेकअप करें सर वो सर बेलेट रहेगा सर फिर से बोलिए जेडी और जेडी अच्छा आप कह रहे हो जेडी में जो चीजें लिखी है उसको रेज्यूमे को उस हिसाब से टेलर नहीं करेंगे आपका नहीं हो पाएगा उसमें इजिली ठीक है कुछ लोग होते हैं जो बहुत ब्लेस्ड होते हैं जिनको जिनका बोलने का स्टाइल बहुत अच्छा होता है जिनका और कुछ हमारे ऐसे लोग होते हैं जो प्रैक्टिस कर करके कर करके घिस घिस के सीखे होते हैं तो आप जो आप बता रहे हैं उस हिसाब से सेकंड कैटेगरी में तो आपको तो मेहनत करनी ही पड़ेगी यस सर मैं बिलीव करता हूँ सर मैं वही चीज में लगा हुआ हूँ हाँ नहीं तो आप करते रहिए उसको और जितने लोगों से बात करते थे आपने आज मेरे से बात करी मैंने आपको कुछ टिप्स दी आप और लोगों से भी बात करें अपने मन में ना रखें इस बात को और जिस इंटरव्यू में रिजेक्ट होते हैं कोशिश करें 
उसमें जो पैनल मेंबर है उसको अगर बात कर सकते हैं उससे पूछ सकते हैं कि मुझे आपने क्यों रिजेक्ट किया तो वो आपको काफी हेल्प करेगा मेरे पास कई बार बाद में लिंकड पे मैसेजेस आते थे लोगों के कि सर मैंने आपको इंटरव्यू दिया था मैं रिजेक्ट हो गया कोई बात नहीं पर आप मुझे ये बता दीजिए आपने मुझे रिजेक्ट क्यों किया था तो मैं उनको दो लाइन का रिप्लाई करके देता हूँ कि भाई ये आपकी चीज कमजोर थी ठीक है थैंक यू सो मच ओके और एच आर आस्क अबाउट लास्ट सी टी सी इन इंटरव्यू समाउ जजेस ऑन दैट बेसिस सो हाउ कैन वी आंसर दिस विदाउट टेलिंग देम एग्जैक्ट फिगर नहीं आपको बताना पड़ेगा एग्जैक्ट फिगर <laughs> इसका कोई तरीका नहीं है आप एच आर को शिवानी आप है कॉल पे यस गुड इवनिंग गुड इवनिंग सो वो क्या होता है सपोज आपने बताया मेरी लास्ट सी टी सी फाइव लैख थी जॉब टेन लैख का है तो वो आपको मना कर देते हैं ऐसा होता है क्या यस ओके सो एंड डिड डू Do you you feel that because you were at a lower CTC, they refused to see you as the candidate fit for that job? Exactly. Sometimes it happens. Okay. Uh, see, there is no way to avoid the answer to this question. You cannot say, "No, nee, I will not tell you my CTC," or worse, okay. you cannot tell a wrong CTC. Okay. Yes, sir. But you can accompany uh, this statement by saying that. i have always been feeling that the ctc that i have been getting is not proportionate to my abilities okay and there were certain such circumstances and situations or scenarios in the campus because of which i landed in a job which was paying me this much however my expectation from you is that you reward me with a compensation which commensurates my skill as you see it and not as my previous company is seeing it theek hai aap jis tarah se mujhe dekh rahe hain aap mujhe us hisab se reward kare meri ye expectation hai nahi na ki waise jaise ki previous company mujhe dikhti thi agar wo company mujhe sahi se dekh rahi hoti to main aaj yahan interview dene hi kyun baithi hoti yes sir theek hai to uh, it's not bad to ask for disproportionate high in interviews as long as you have a reason for the same maine aise kai logo ko hire kiya hai jinka salary package pehle 5 lakh ya 6 lakh tha aur maine unko 12 lakh ya 13 lakh ke package pe seedhe hire kiya hai kyun kyunki wo pichli company mein 3 saal se usi package pe the company ki situation kharab thi company unko hike nahi de payi 3 saal tak otherwise wo apne aap hi 8 ya 9 lakh ke hote aur fir 12 pe main unko waise bhi hire kar sakta tha ya unke batch ke jo dusre bacche hain वो अभी जिन कंपनियों में है वो 11-12 लाख के पैकेज में तो इसलिए ये बच्चा अभी डिजर्व करता है अगर ये काम उतना अच्छा कर सकता है ठीक है ओके इज देयर अ सैलरी करेक्शन बिकॉज ऑफ कोविड नाउ रिक्रूटर डोंट अंडरस्टैंड द सेम एंड जस्ट से एज पर मार्केट स्टैंडर्ड यू कैन गेट 30 परसेंट हाई हाउ टू जस्टिफाई दैट मत जाओ प्रियांशु ऐसी कंपनी में जो आपको अंडर पे करके हायर करना चाहता है दैट इज माई वन वर्ड एडवाइस टू यू बिकॉज ये अभी नहीं आपको नेक्स्ट टाइम भी इसी तरह से अंडर पे करने की कोशिश करेंगे इस बार तो आप शायद लड़के ले लोगे बट आगे भी आ, क्योंकि ये आपकी सिचुएशन का मिस यूज कर रहे हैं राइट सर वॉन्ट टू आस्क यून मोर थिंग गुड इवनिंग सर सर आई हैव लाइक अराउंड फोर ईयर्स ऑफ एक्सपीरियंस वर्किंग इन स्टार्टअप and uh, i am into sales uh, uh, sales and business development and majorly into consultative sales so the thing is as i mentioned because of covid uh, the things were not that good the company was struggling my previous company sure so the current company have taken the advantage and given me the hike on on my previous role now see you are also aware you have you are working in a startup and you know how the things are uh you know like working on a thin wire uh, if you are working in a startup because every day is a new challenge for you because things are not that same so my point here is uh whatever the interview which i am giving right now or whatever the things like i have you know juggled from different roles like right? from education industry to real estate e-commerce industry now to fintech now i am looking in saas right now but one thing what i have realized is i am good in consultative sales but okay. the pay which i am getting right now and the opportunities which are opened for me uh, while i am giving the interview are very less 
so i am not getting how i can justify the things in terms of package also and in terms of industry as well see see you have suffered loss because of an environmental scenario right but the company that you are applying to you are expecting that one organization to fix the wrong done by the environment and by in the previous 2 years or 3 years by your current company okay so maybe i don't know exactly the numbers what are we talking about but maybe you are expecting one company to fix everything that has gone wrong with you in one go okay and maybe that is a little high expectation from your end with this company maybe you can fix it over the next couple of years so i'm not that uh, that much expecting like uh, let's say you know not expecting like two times or three times but at least you know what i am expecting right now is 70 to 80 percent high uh, from the new company right and i would like appreciate also if you could just give me five minutes now uh, this is a common discussion uh, like personally i want to discuss with you currently i'm working with phone pay right now so okay. uh, i want to discuss with you <laughs> uh, that, <laughs> sure. that's the thing you can connect with me right thank I you i don't know how much will i be able to help you but i can definitely talk to you right thank you so much sir okay i guess that's it anybody hello priyank sir one last doubt hello sure so my so kiran here sir uh, because lack of awareness i have shifted multiple companies sir uh, and uh, that's my mistake in the early stages of career now i'm carrying close to 4 years of experience Hmm. one year i have shifted three companies and remaining I, so few i cannot keep in experience and you know in total i have worked for six and four on the resume so the additional will be reflected in are the you in a, are you in one company right now yeah, no no sir currently i'm it's from past four months i am looking for a job sir but i'm hmm. not able to find and even if the recruiters are asking uh in bosh i have given an interview sir they are they, everything went well and they have asked for the pan card and uh, which shows about the com- extra two companies that i haven't revealed there so it's just because i was not aware or nobody said me that it is very important to work at a single company uh, now i understood that it is very important from past four months i'm looking for a job and recently even on my resume there are four companies but still they are uh, they ask that you know it's not like more than 2 years you didn't work anywhere so it's it's like it's what you know, what kind of job are you applying to i'm i'm applying to multiple jobs sir as you said that ads is picking up the resume and i'm smartly adjusting my keywords as well but i'm not getting calls enough uh, for any of them no can you tell me a type of job are you applying to like a sales manager team leader bd what what level of job Uh, what salary range any idea if you can help uh, me so my la- my last package was 10.2 sir i started uh, with 1.5 four years before uh, uh, sure. my last package was 10.2 and i worked uh, with the solar industry which serves into micro inverters and it's it's completely into pre sales engineering sir you are into sales right yes sir i am into sales and means i am into support to sales and support to. okay uh, see this is a uh, tough scenario uh, because you know too many switches does indicate some kind of instability in a candidate but i'm sure you have already realized that part now the point is see here again i would have you tried approaching with certain references uh, no sir never before i haven't tried please do that okay see okay. whenever there is a see you have to understand what is the meaning of a reference the reference means el- helping the future recruiter with trust okay if somebody can create trust on your behalf okay with your future recruiter because problem are is people are not able to trust you right that is the problem correct sir that this guy he leaves every four months now he will leave us again also he is talking nicely but he may not adhere to his words he has demonstrated this uh, four times already So you have to create trust. So you have to create trust with one of these four companies, ka one of the managers, or some kind of a coworker who can refer you to someone else with a strong reference. 
So I think you should approach with some kind of reference. And if it comes to worse, maybe you can approach with the intent of some kind of an internship. Okay. If you have some financial backing, if you have some corpus with you for some time, try doing an internship in an organization, which is your dream organization. And then get converted again to a level which you were already working. Don't hesitate to do that. Rather than sitting at home for four months, I would rather do an internship and learn something better. Okay, sir. Okay. Is there any alternative apart from, sir, I definitely I'll try this reference way, sir. And uh, yeah, sir, I tried this, this as well. One of my friends who has 40,000 followers on LinkedIn has shared my... Profile. No, no, those are not shared. references. Those are not references. References is somebody coming and talking to me. Somebody knows me. For example, if, if I know Sanchai, if I know Himadri, if I know you, you coming and telling me personally that, you know, why don't you hire this guy? That is a reference. LinkedIn posts and all those are not reference. They are more of uh, charity asking for that. Okay. No, it's charity. It's like oh. this person is in so much need and all. Those jobs you get out of pity, not because of confidence you have in that person. All right, sir. All right. And any other alternative, sir, apart from this means even uh, recently I've given an interview in one of the mechatronics companies, sir. They have interviewed me and everything went very well and they've given a very positive feedback. But after everything happened, once I, I, I was very confident that um, everything is, I, I will be selected. But later on, uh, earlier they asked me, are you okay with the same package of what you, you're getting before? But unfortunately, I said that uh, I would like to be fairly compensated. Uh, I'm expecting a decent hike of uh, what my previous pay was. So th they gave it a thought and the consulting firm has informed me that they have found someone for a way much uh, lesser package. You, 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 are, you are trying to grab everything. No, you have to, you'll have to adjust a little bit is what I feel. Okay, sir. And it's okay. okay you are just four years of experience. How old are you? Like 27, 28? I'm 26, sir. I'm 26, 26, right? You have 30 years of corporate life ahead of you. You'll get enough hikes. Don't worry. You'll get bored of hikes. You'll get so many hikes. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Hello. Okay. Yes. Uh, sir, good morning, sir. This is Maheshwara from Bangalore, sir. Who, who's from Bangalore? Mahesh, sir. Mahesh. Mahesh. Okay. Mahesh. Raise the hand, ma. I am raising the hand here, sir. Mahesh from yes, Bangalore. Yes, please. I, I, yes, please. Tell me. Ah, that is into uh, typing in Telugu. That is. Uh, Achha, I Achha. want to shift to FMCG into different industry, but not accept me other industry companies. But I think FMCG is too problematic industry compared to other industry. Please give me some suggestions. What are you doing in FMCG? Yeah, FMCG as an assistant manager into sales. Right now, I am uh, working as as an area manager role, sir. Area manager. Uh, no, from the UV group. And why? And how many years you have been in FMCG, sir? From starting 2016, my career start. Six years. After, uh, after MBA, I am continuously working to that into FMCG industry. FMCG and, and right to other industries because uh, uh, telecom, fintech, edtech, they regularly hire from FMCGs. Yes, sir. But actually, uh, even in edutech also, I am trying to get into. I want to work in edutech industry, sir. Uh, but into SaaS products and edutech industry. A B2B side and B2B, B2C side. But uh, I don't know that I am I am communication is I know the five languages. Hindi and uh, local Telugu, Tamil, Kannada, Malayalam, the South Indian languages, international Hindi languages. I, I want to, I am also talk to Arabic also. But that is no possible to get in into uh, other other industries. Uh, even uh, from the Juno School of Club, they are referring to me. But they are not hired. I don't know. That is... Hey, uh, I don't think... Uh, I need a language expert always to sell. See, I need a sales expert. How, how can you prove that you are a successful salesperson? Everything you touch sells. Yes, yes, sir. Hundred percent, sir. Because of that is a thing here. I am I, I am a very top performer at all FMCG because no, I, no, I am performer. again. If you've heard the previous part of my session, you have to explain to the people whom you are interviewing with how you became the top performer. Okay. If you yes. are able to explain that why you can sell soap, shampoo, etc. Yes, sir. And you have a method and a process for it. And same, you can apply it to selling educational course packages. That's it. I don't see a reason for you not being yes, picked up. 
sorry sir i got a call that is really strong okay so don't focus on languages don't focus on awards don't focus on six years in one industry focus on what makes you success what do you do different every day when you go out into the field or to the office which is something that you can do different in that company also yes sir yes sir yes sir yes sir yes sir yes sir that the reason because sir i am trying to get into other industry but i am not able to that not taken me because so you are in the I best don't... industry you are in the industry which is the father mother grandfather of every other industry okay <laughs> even even my boss is at 30 years industry <laughs> yeah yeah so i you, i i know every other industry has learned from your industry okay this is a too toughest to handle the all operations here sir there is nothing easy let me give that news to you okay <laughs> ask okay. people uh, uh, see the next person ayush has said i am what kind of industry should i try to i am working in edtech so what you want she already has but she does not want it right because she feels that edtech is too tough so, <laughs> 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 that's not okay. tough it's just that i feel like i'm stuck in that particular one zone only and i want that, to that's the problem with everyone i see <laughs> everyone has that problem that i am stuck i am <laughs> so that's okay it's very natural it's completely okay it is how it's supposed to be only point is just focus on the right ways and it's okay to make experiments and try it and you guys all of you you can make so many errors right now out of that so uh, to answer your question uh, you are working at tech you can go to everything which has tech associated with it you can go to food tech you are going to go to fintech you can go to agri tech you can go to ai you can go to any industry because what you have learned is endurance in an industry right when you are when you can endure uh, business pressure targets customer vocs that is something which is common in every company So, like, is it easy to shift from B two C to B two B? Like, how exactly can I make a shift towards that? You'll have to. Uh, you'll have to. Uh, when you go from B two C, see, I made that shift from B two C to B two B. By the way, okay. Uh, but I made the shift internally in the organization, and then moved externally. If you All have right. the opportunity, exploit that first. Uh huh. Okay. Do you have that opportunity? No, I don't think so. okay uh, if you are in edtech there would be an opportunity i think uh, you can try it within edtech only b2b sales that would be lesser change because you would be familiar with edtech at least okay mm-hmm. yeah so maybe try that you and one you don't have b2b but edtech as a industry definitely has lot of b2b right okay okay yeah yeah definitely there must be i need to do research for that yes. and one thing more i wanted to know since you know i'm just a fresher i can say it's just been around 1.5 to 2 years i'm into this industry so uh, like i haven't done my mba in you know i'm just a graduate so is it important to go for an mba in sales marketing <laughs> or <laughs> how exactly it works See, my answer to this question always has been that if you can do do it and put it aside okay, okay. है ना आप कर सकते हो तो करके एम बी साइड में रख दो कल को आपके ऊपर मन में टेंशन नहीं रहेगा सामने वाला आपको ये रीजन नहीं दे पाएगा कि भाई तुम जिन लोगों को मैनेज कर रहे हो वो एम बी है तुम्हारे पास एम बी नहीं है तुमको कैसे मैनेजर बना दे ठीक है सो इफ यू कैन डू सी इट्स लर्निंग टेक इट टेक डोंट टेक इट एज अ डिग्री टेक इट एज अ लर्निंग डू इम्पोर्टेंट गुड प्रोजेक्ट इन इट बिल्ड नेटवर्क वाइल यू आर डूइंग एन एम बी डू केस स्टडीज यू नोट मीट बिजनेस लीडर्स and get a degree from a good institute uh, experience campus environment if you can afford to uh, yeah so if you can do it is what but uh, in mba also then it gets deep and like you know i don't want to leave the job and then go for a regular mba ah, so, so do weekend courses slog on saturdays and sundays like online mba is that like will that be fruitful no do a hybrid no you you are in which city i am in delhi Delhi. So go to uh, you know MDI Gurgaon. They have a weekend course. Go to IMT Ghaziabad. They have a weekend course. Go to IFT. They have a weekend course. Go to you know any any of these good institutes. Mm-hmm. Uh, it will cost a few lakhs. You can get an education loan. You can pay it easily. Yeah, yeah, that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Fine. I I'll figure it out. Thank you. 
if you can sir, yeah sir is it fine to go and start up sir we have only 3 to 4 year experience sir you have a good idea sir no i have prefer to the company who have experience and barely established sir sorry i didn't get you, you have to repeat so is it fine to go a company who are new startup acha you want to join a startup you are saying so is it safe sir for the phrases sir are it's a very broad question there are like 1 lakh startups how can i tell you not all startups are unsafe uh, see you have to meet the founders if it's a very small company say if you are in the first 20 or 30 employees of that company meet the founders see if you find a vibe with them understand the product see if you are willing to buy the company services whatever that startup is selling then 10 other people will also buy right but if you only don't want to buy that service then probably other 10 people will also not buy so if there is a market and if the people are good then why not and as you said you are in early stages of your career even if you flunk along with the startup a couple of times that's completely okay okay sir we can we can put ourselves and try to understand is, is we take the services or product and that other person can take yes understand na see if i if i am if i want to give a, a lecture to people and i only don't like my own voice then how can i expect others to listen to me yes sir hai na i i am i am speaking so fast that i can't figure out what i am saying myself right or if my best friend can can't figure out then how will other 20 people figure out i have to correct it first before i start doing that sir i talked to my friend uh, and uh, i tried to get a reference with my friend and sir my and the company is fintech company sir and uh, suppose sir you are in a hr in that company then how i prepare myself for the interview sir some basic question that maybe into or will be asked me at the time of interview sir ha to these all na they are available right all these questions there are like seven eight questions which you have to prepare the first question tell me about yourself you know this question will be asked to you okay so you have to prepare for this question okay second question your strengths and weakness second next question why should we hire you these are typical questions you have to see you have to go through your life journey so far pick out all the incidents that have happened okay kya bhi acha hua hai aapke sath jo bhi on sab ke examples ki ek list banaiye us sab se aapne kya sikha kya acha kiya wo sab ki list banaiye ye sab aapke paas ready agar hoga na to aap aaram se kisi bhi question ka answer de sakte ho सर स्पेशली सर ऐसे अपन लाइफ की जर्नी को सर अपन को रियलाइज करेंगे उसको समझने की कोशिश करेंगे तो सारे जो क्वेश्चन पुट करे जाएंगे हम उनका आंसर कर पाएंगे सर मैं एग्री करता हूँ इस बात से लेकिन एक फाइनेंस का मतलब एचआर होने के परस्पेक्टिव से वो क्या पूछ सकता है मतलब मैनेजमेंट के बारे में फाइनेंस के बारे में फाइनेंशियल सिस्टम के बारे में कुछ वेबसाइट्स हैं जिनपे ना कंपनीज में पूछे आने वाले इंटरव्यू के क्वेश्चन मैंशन होते हैं ग्लास डोर हो गया है ना आप इनपे जाएंगे और उस कंपनी का वो रोल सिलेक्ट करेंगे तो पिछले लोगों से क्या इंटरव्यू में क्वेश्चन पूछे गए वो वहां पे मेंशन होते हैं आप उनको पढ़ के प्रिपेयर कर सकते हैं ओके दैट्स अ गुड आइडिया सर दैट्स अ गुड आइडिया गुड गुड यू लाइक इट डेफिनेटली सर सो आई गेस संजय एंड हिमाद्री आई हैव बीन एबल टू कवर सम क्वेश्चंस एब्सोल्युटली प्रियंक एंड आई थिंक यू नो अ लॉट ऑफ a lot of people had their questions which i think they've been practically struggling to seek answers and these are real life situations that people go through uh, you know in an interview yeah, or when yeah. they try to you know upscale themselves uh, switching industries try to change jobs so i think uh, one of the most insightful sessions that we've had and i think uh, every person who's in sales or non sales can relate to this statement no sell a pen so i think we've gone beyond just the selling piece and trying to relate that to the recruiter's perspective what is that the recruiter is trying to gather through that statement so i think uh, really insightful uh, priyank thank you and we really appreciate that you taking out time and that on a saturday evening and you know spending so much time with our learners and others to enrich us with the knowledge and the experience that you have and thank you the others uh, for a lovely session and being a great audience we will see you on the other side which is next week saturday same time 6 o'clock right
till then take care thank you so much thank you thank you himadri and thank you sanjay yeah. thanks priyank thanks priyank thanks everyone yeah bye bye